2.1 livestream had a plethora of new features, updates, events, items, characters, and everything else I couldn't mention for time's sake. But to watch a whole hour's worth of streams is quite a task, especially when you're not used to watching streams. So I compiled and shortened everything you need to know for what's to come in the 2.1 patch. It's still kind of a lot, but it's still shorter than one and a half hours of watch time. So here's the things you need to know about the 2.1 special program livestream. We'll be starting off with the newest characters. We're getting a total of 4 new characters, namely Raiden Shogun and Sara on the first banner, and Sangonomiya Kokomi on the second banner, with Aloy from the sacred lands of post-apocalyptic 31st century Earth coming as soon as 2.1 drops and is claimable on PlayStation only. More info on that later. Keep in mind we're still waiting for confirmed official stats, so I will withhold some bits of information on the said characters. If you wish to see more, then please check out the website we always go to for some extra bit of info. The first character, Raiden Shogun, is a 5-star Electro Polearm user focused on energy recharge and quick burst DPS. She can also provide off-field damage and restore her team's energy with her ultimate. Her elemental skill Transcendence Baleful Omen deals electro damage and grants nearby party members an Eye of Stormy Judgment. This Eye of Stormy Judgment will deal coordinated AoE electro damage with the active character and increases burst damage of your team. Her burst, Secret Art Musou Shinsetsu changes her weapon from a pole arm to a sword and deals electro damage with every attack and cannot be infused. Whenever she hits an opponent, she recharges energy for her team and gains electro charge immunity as well as interruption resistance. And every attack the Raiden Shogun deals in her burst mode is considered elemental damage. Her passive, Enlightened One, increases her team's energy restoration in burst form and gets an increased electro damage bonus for every 1% of energy recharge after 100%. So be sure to build and save those ER pieces if you're pulling for Raiden Shogun. The next character is going to be Sara Kujo. She's a 4 star electro bow user that can provide your team with damage buffs and energy recharge, as well as packing her own punches herself. Her elemental skill, Tengu Storm Call, dashes back and gains a Crow Feather cover. She can then use this Crow Feather cover by charge attacking, and whatever is hit will leave a Crow Feather, triggering the effect Tengu Jurai Ambush that deals AoE electro damage and increases attack for nearby characters. Unlocking the passive talent, Decorum, will restore energy to her team based on her energy recharge whenever Tengu Jurai activates. Her burst, Subjugation, Coco Sendo, strikes an area with AoE Electro Damage, and spreads out more Lightning Strikes, dealing even more Electro Damage. The Lightning Strikes are spread into 4 directions. Both the main Lightning Strike and the secondary Strikes will increase the attack of the active character in its AoE. However, each individual effect does not stack, and the time limit and attack bonus gained will only be applied by the last Tengu Jurai buff. The third character, Sangonomiya Kokomi, is a 5-star Hydro Catalyst user whose sole purpose is to keep your team alive and provide healing as well as some bits of damage for your team. Her elemental skill, Kurage's Oath, summons a jellyfish that restores HP for the active character while attacking enemies with hydro damage. So it both heals and attacks, but we still need to confirm if it attacks and heals simultaneously. Her burst, Myriad Ascension, deals Hydro AoE damage and increases hers as well as her Jellyfish's damage. Unlocking the passive Princess of Watatsumi reduces stamina consumed when swimming. To solidify her role as a non-DPS character, she has a negative 100% base crit rate, so any crit and crit damage stats are basically useless on her. She does, however, benefit from healing bonus items and artifacts. And the final character, Aloy, which is a 5-star Cryo Bow user who seems to sit between main DPS and support DPS role. Her elemental skill Frozen Wilds throws a bomb at a targeted location, keywords targeted, much like Baron Bunny, and deals AoE cryo damage. After exploding, it then scatters small freeze bombs, dealing more cryo damage when it gets in contact with opponents. The smaller bombs also decrease your opponent's attack. Whenever she throws her bomb, she gains a coil stack that increases her normal attack damage. With her 4 stack, she then gains cryo damage to her normal attacks. In her passive Strong Strike, she gains a constantly increased increasing cryo damage after the 4 stacks. After unlocking the talent, Combat Override, she increases her team's attack at maximum stacks. Her burst, Prophecies of Dawn, throws a cryo power cell and shoots it to deal large AoE cryo damage. 
Now to unlock her, you'll need to be at least AR20 and will need to log in to a PS4 or PS5 console. That's the only way to obtain her if you want her right away as early as 2.1. After that, she can be unlocked in 2.2 on any platform. At number 2, we'll also be getting the new quest lines, Imperatrix Ambrosia for Raiden and the Dracaena Somnolentus quest for Kokomi. This is basically personal character quests for both Kokomi and Raiden, meaning we'll be getting into a more in-depth story of Kokomi's side and Raiden Shogun's side of the conflicts, as well as a better look at both their goals and plans and the motivations behind their actions. Anyone who's gotten a headache for what the heck Raiden's actually doing and why she does it, as well as how Kokomi and the Resistance came to be, will be very glad to do these quests. At number 3, there'll be two new 5-star weapons coming to 2.1, and it'll be following the new character banners Raiden Shogun and Kokomi. The engulfing storm, or the sod trimmer as we all call it, is going to be Raiden's bread and butter weapon, as well as the new catalyst, Everlasting Moonglow, being Kokomi's best in slot weapon. We're still waiting for official stats and numbers, but if you're feeling nosy, check out our favorite website that we all go to for more info on that. For the fourth, Watatsumi Island is going to be the main island the Resistance Forces of the Sangonomiya clan. Characterized by its coral reefs, floating water bubbles, and a huge hole right in the middle of the island. The huge building in the middle is known as the Sangonomiya Shrine and serves as the HQ of the Resistance Forces and quote, exudes a dreamy aura. Number 5, the constantly stormy and chaotic state of the island as a whole, Seirai Island is littered with rundown houses and shrines and floating pieces of boulders and debris, setting a continuous looming danger within its vicinity. The island does still have a standing shrine called the Asase Shrine, with a head priestess of the shrine being a talking black cat. At number 6, we'll be getting the new Oceanid Elite boss with a very bat-like appearance and of course carrying its own set of electro attacks. Along with the new Hydro Hypostasis, throwing out a plethora of Hydro attacks and Hydro animals to fight us. At number 7, the Senora boss fight or Trance Domain. Not only do we get two new elite bosses, we also get the new boss domain. And it's surprisingly, a Pyro slash Cryo La Senora boss fight. I guess she doesn't just wield Cryo as her element. More story about delusions perhaps? At numbers 8, 9, 10, and 11, they'll all be a part of the main event of Patch 2.1 which is going to be the Moon Chase Festival. In the Moon Chase Festival, you'll be traveling with Changling and Keqing, searching for the true origins of the Moon Chase Festival. Gathering ingredients, cooking, and taste testing are going to be the main task of this event. We're sure to be receiving some new recipes throughout the event. The Moonlight Seeker is going to be one of the smaller events where Moon Chase charms and Mist Moon chests all around Teibat, not including Inazuma, because, well, political reasons, will be placed for the players to look for. The travelers can talk to event organizers for clues to find the location of the chest and charms. A new 4-star Claymore named Luxurious Sea Lord is going to be the new weapon claimable in the Moon Chase event, as well as the refinement materials being obtainable through the event shop. The stats and damage numbers aren't officially mentioned yet, so we'll have to wait for further announcements. The Trail of Delicacies is also going to be another smaller event within the Moon Chase Festival. In this event, travelers will have to locate camps and monsters. Each camp has leaders with buffs and effects. The travelers can also offer food, probably from the moon chase recipes, to get buffs to help beat the camps and monsters in the event. At number 12, Seize the Day is finally back. Well, not really, but yes, but no, uh, whatever. So the new 7 day event provides travelers with the following for the next 7 days once 2.1 is released. There's also going to be a global times 2 crystal reset, meaning that your generous crystals will be doubled when you purchase them in 2.1. At number 13, we'll be having a runescape throwback in the form of fishing. So in 2.1, the players can create different kinds of bait depending on the specific fish that you are looking for. The fish aren't just for cooking, however. We can also exchange them for rewards and can be traded to the new fishing association shop for fishing rods to help catch more fish. Now the travelers can also catch keep and raise special ornamental fish as their pets in their teapots, as well as purchasing a new pond where you can put them in. And when the travelers have enough fishing skill, they can then participate in getting the new Lunar Leviathan fish in the Lunar Realm event. And once the Lunar Leviathan is caught, it can quote, fulfill someone's wishes. Anyone up for a free 5 star? At number 14, Yakunin Iki is a tag team gauntlet event where travelers can place teams of two for what looks like different matches and can only use the selected two characters on each match. Each tag gets an exclusive ability of the player's choosing. Every match is centered around a time limit where if the team doesn't finish within the time limit, they will slowly lose combat abilities and possibly lowering their damage. But the players can also swap to a different team within the match and gain for 
server points. And after getting a certain amount of points, you can unlock bonuses to increase your team's combat abilities. Spectra Secrets is basically a spicier expedition event. First, the travelers need to go to specific locations to clear out specters and other event mobs. Then the travelers can send out expeditions using the respective element recommended by the Adventurers Guild. After completing the expeditions, you can claim your rewards in the form of spare change. At number 16 is a teapot update. Any duplicated item or furniture will have a lowered load cost. So if you have 30 folding screens, 29 of them will have a lowered load amount. At number 18, as an ode to a year since Genshin Impact's release, Mihoyo staged an online orchestra concert for this year's anniversary celebration. Musicians from all over the globe will be playing their own covers of Mihoyo's musical soundtracks, as well as a collaboration between Hoyo Mix and Sony Music to release a new Inazuma-themed OST. That's gonna be it for the main things that you need to know. And as a bonus, I'll be mentioning something not related to Primo Gems or finishing the events quickly. This bonus is going to be more about story and theory. So the Fatui seems like they're all behind what's happening in Inazuma and the state of the Shogun. But Raiden might also be the one who contacted them first, as well as the inclusion of Senora and Scaramouche in one of the scenes of the 2.1 trailer. We also get some sneak peek dialogue about the Shogun and Scaramouche. Now a quick theory here is that Raiden did lose her vision but it wasn't stolen or taken and she's not a former shell of herself but is still hidden inside her own domain and that will get to talk to her properly later on. Our dialogue with Scaramouche doesn't really entail much apart from the traveler seeming tired or weak but hints from the MCs seems like we'll see more of both Senora and know the origins of Scaramouche in the story. With all those mentioned that's all you need to know about what's coming to the patch 2.1 of Genshin Impact. Leave a like and click on that subscribe button as well as click on the bell icon to stay updated on my videos and comment on what you guys think about the latest live stream update Mihoyo revealed for 2.1. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Outro party. Uh, no, okay. <laughs> At this time, finishing recording, it's 3 a.m. And I haven't played Genshin Impact yet apart from my dailies. Though I did condense my resins and weirdly enough the live stream schedules were pretty ugh, pretty crazy pretty messed up and we had to watch like 30 minutes of the cn stream before the english stream went up so yeah that's that's pretty weird anyways i'm going to bed for now and i'll see you guys in the next video Paalam.